The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhaus here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Bethany Wyatt, who is a Senior Technical Service Specialist with BSF. How's it going today? Really good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So we are here today to talk about 4Rs. Now, we're hearing lots and lots of 4Rs recently in the last couple of years when it comes to environmental stewardship. However, in a year where inputs are very costly, we're talking about it even more. What are the 4Rs? So when it comes to 4R nutrient management, it's essentially a set of principles for managing fertilizer application that's going to take economics, agronomics, logistics, and environmental stewardship into account. Specifically, they are the right source, right rate, right time, and right place. So let's break down each of those 4Rs. Let's maybe start right rate. What is what is that? So when we are talking about the right rate, this step is kind of ensuring that your crop has the proper amount of nutrients available to meet your target yield. Okay, and right source? Right source would be utilizing products to ensure that the nutrients are going to be in the proper plant available form by the time of take up. Okay, right time? Right time is essentially... Um, saying that the nutrients um, need to be made available as close to crop uptake as possible, Um, essentially meaning that if you're applying too early, that could increase losses, um, not only on your bottom line, but essentially losses to the environment as well, which we don't want either. And now right place, do you want to elaborate on what that is? Yeah, so right place is really ensuring that the nutrients are going to be as close to the plant's as possible to ensure that uptake actually happens, but also to help decrease those unwanted losses to the environment. So when looking at all of these as a whole, why are these all beneficial to, you know, your economic bottom line, your agronomic, your logistical, your environmental? Why why are these so crucial? So I, I'll start off by saying the vast majority of growers in Western Canada are already doing a very good job following um, for our nutrient management. Essentially, the equipment we have, the products we we have available to us, and the way and the time that we farm in, it it allows us to be able to follow this. But of course, a year such as this one, it it allows us to have a really good opportunity to fine tune um, some of these specifically. Um, When it comes to economics, ultimately, we're looking at um, getting getting the right rate. Um, For example, I mean, I could take any of these four hours as an example, but right rate when when we're talking about this year in economics. We know that last year, um, many experienced extreme drought conditions. And one of the things that comes with that is that are a lot of crops didn't reach their potential yields, their full potential yield, but they were fertilized for a lot higher crops. So there is the potential for residual or carryover nitrogen left in a lot of fields. So doing something like soil testing can absolutely help um, determine if you have some carryover nitrogen. And then looking at your crop, what you're targeting this year, you can maybe utilize some of that nitrogen um, carryover that you would have from last year um, if if we're talking about economics when it comes to agronomics really that that's all about applying products at the right time and again the right source they kind of go together Um, one example of that would be you know if we are applying nitrogen in the fall floating um, nitrogen on in the fall um, we're we know that there can be losses from nitrogen fertilizer. So if you are doing that, whether it's from an agronomic or logistical reason, make sure that you're using the proper product, you know, make sure your nitrogen has a urease or nitrification inhibitor to prevent those losses. Not only are you losing valuable nutrients um, if the conditions are right, um, but obviously those losses to the atmosphere, which we want to decrease. Now, enhanced efficiency fertilizers, does that fit into this whole thing? Yeah, it definitely does. So 
one one example of that would be um, ESN, for example, um, polymer coated urea. That one really helps with the right time, um, right place as well. Um, essentially, you can seed place a lot more nitrogen or of this ESN um, product than you could regular urea, for example, because it's a lot safer. But not only that is it will release slowly throughout the season to kind of match the time of crop uptake so that you don't have a whole bunch or all of it plant available at the beginning of the season. And then depending what kind of season you have, you might have some losses of that nitrogen before the plants can actually use it. Now, when we talk about the right place, we often talk about subsurface fertilizer applications. Do you want to elaborate a bit more on what those are and and why we need to kind of look at really getting that right place with our applications? So with that, I I kind of touched on it a little bit if we're talking about, say, floating on the fall or even floating on um, in the spring or in season. Um, That is extremely important because we know that these fertilizers can have losses to the atmosphere, um, whether it's through leaching uh, or denitrification, depending what kind of conditions we have. So really, this, this plays a role because if you as I said if you are using these fertilizers you want to make sure that we are not getting those those losses so you're using something like a urease or nitrification inhibitor on it but ultimately the best way is if you are placing it into the ground placing it into the ground versus on top that alone is going to help decrease um, some of those losses of course there still can be in other ways but just in terms of that placement that alone definitely helps uh, with the four part of the 4R nutrient strategy. Now, when thinking about 4Rs, we often, like you said, there's a lot of people that are actually doing it and they may not entirely realize it. Do you want to talk a bit about the importance of planning and record keeping when it comes to all these things? Yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a really good um, point with that because really nitrogen and fer- or sorry nutrient and fertilizer management is not just a one year thing and i think sometimes we do get a little bit caught up in looking at year per year but really it is a long term approach if you've been under fertilizing under fertilizing for a few years you know certain nutrients like phosphorus and potassium um i guess even nitrogen to a point if you aren't putting enough in you're going to be mining the soil and you're going to end up at a deficit so realistically you also have to remember you know certain nutrients like nitrogen and sulfur are mobile in the soil so of course those can be lost if we get some wetter years or different conditions that can cause um, losses a lot quicker Um, whereas something like phosphorus and potassium they're not mobile in the soil but at the same time that then means it's tougher for the plant to uptake them they also have to be um, built up in the soil if if you have been under fertilizing for a few years so really it's looking at your long-term crop plan your rotation you know whether having a pulse in there might make a difference Um, and and again it's really utilizing um things like soil testing. Um, a good way to think about it is like a bank account. I mean, you're you're putting nutrients in, you might be pulling more than you're actually using depending on the crop. Or like I had already mentioned, a year like last year with crops that didn't reach their potential, um, there very well could be some left over and why not try and take advantage or at least know what know what's there and what's not. Yeah, you don't want to keep a credit on or you don't want to keep a balance on that credit card. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, anything else you would like to add when it comes to uh, looking at some of these techniques and practices? So overall, um, like I like we kind of said, most most growers are already doing a very good job with this. But again, I think this coming up year, we have a really good opportunity to try and maybe just fine tune. Um, one or one or two of these strategies that can definitely, I think everyone, you know, always has a little bit of a room room for improvement, no matter what, no matter what we're doing. Um, so yeah, just again, uh, really, really take a look at what your yield goals are, what what you have there, and uh, just maybe try fine tune a few of these practices to get the most out of every dollar you're spending on your fertilizer and about and from every pound of uh, fertilizer that you are putting down. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much for your time, Bethany. Thank you very much.